G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Back out on the Bilbowman truck and we're heading to the Mount Cook shelter. So let's go and have a look around. Look at that, Mount Cook shelter. And it's one of the old wooden shelters which I prefer. And this one sleeps, I believe, between 12 and 15 people at Squeeze. The old bunk beds, top and bottom. Same on the other side, the bunk beds. And then the platform across the bottom for you to lay your sleep mat and your sleep bag on. There's your boxes with your uh, register in there. So as you're walking on the Bibbleman track, always remember to sign in the book saying where you come from where you're going and how long you're going to be just in case anything happens because then they can check the shelters and the shelters that you signed in and then to the one that you haven't they know that you'll be roughly in between there but they're nice and clean shelter this one and the majority of them on the Bilbo track are they provide a broom a rake a couple of hand brushes here so you can clean your area when you get here and be polite and clean up after. And a couple by the looks of it left there, the sun is behind. Uh, just up there is Mount Cook. And if you're heading south, that's what you'll be heading for from here. And if you're heading north, that's where you've just come from. So let's go and have a look around. First, where we just walked in, the actual track goes this way. You can see there it says a group campsite, and then the sign to here for your tent pitches. Now, the tent, when I say one, I mean the average two person hiking tent. So, the first one we come to is a decent sized one. You could fit two on there fairly easy and probably squeeze a third one in and it's fairly level very little pea gravel or anything on here but remember the ground uh, from north is hard and then the further south you go the softer it gets getting down towards the sand dunes where you got all the sand so it's nice and soft there so you're gonna have to be prepared with different types of pegs and we'll up to the next one. And another fairly nice one. Shape wise, because it goes up over there, comes down here, starts to go down there. Really, you're only going to fit one on here comfortably with some spare space for yourself. Or you could fit two, but they're not really going to be that even. But still, a nice tent pitch. I see nothing up there. I think that's an animal track by the looks of it. Going around. Yeah, I can't see nothing up there. So head up this little track coming off this tent pitch. Heading back uphill. This is where we just walked down the Bill Woman track. And we've got another tent pitch up there, so let's go and have a look. Now this all around the area is uneven until you get to the actual tent pitch itself. And that's fairly level. Pig gravel's a bit more on it, but if you got your tent and make sure you use a footprint or ground sheet whatever you want to call it to protect the bottom of your tent and a decent sleeping uh, mat most of these small stones you won't feel just kick the big ones out of the way I think that's just an animal track by the looks of it Have a look. Yeah, it's getting 
sensor. And an assistant animal track this bit coming off that. So let's go back down. my pole with me, I left it at the shelter. I think the rest are fairly level. Okay, we've got a little track coming off this way. Just going to have a look. And we're coming to another tent pitch. Now this one's not so level. Looks nice, but it's not level. It's actually leaning down that way. So I suppose if you started with your head at the top by the morning, I reckon you'd probably be at the bottom of your sleep mat. Let's go up and have a look at this one. This one's not so bad. Slight lean to it, unevenness to it. Like a bit of a hill bit, but. All in all, not too bad. Size wise, the area is big enough for maybe squeeze three tents on there, but really one comfortably to find the level spot, which I think would be just about there ish over the far side because it really comes down steep here. There's another track there, which I think will probably go down to more tent pitches. But before we do that, we'll go around the long way. That may take us to the same tent pitch. Or it may just take us back down to the track. Hey, it's lovely down here. Really quiet at the moment. If I stop, I only just hear some traffic in the distance on the Albany Highway, which I believe is that direction coming down. Yep. Fire pit. There's your fire pit with some nice logs going around there to, for to sit on and a small bench I've made. And you've got your picnic bench over here. Nice and comfortable isn't it out here? Next with its own long bench. This is a nice one. A little bit close to the track there but all in all it's really nice. Level, flat. No rocks on it, no pea gravel, just like it sand on a fairly hard base and the evidence there the kangaroos clawing and hopping through. Uh, let's carry on looking. Come back to that side on our way back down and it's pointing here for more tent pitches. Is that the one? Yeah, that goes up to the one I mentioned. And so we'll go back the way and then have a look at this. Yeah, this one goes back up there and then we've got a couple of tracks coming off. Let's go and have a look. Track carries on around. Let's go to that one first. Yeah. So 
about the bumpiest one I've seen. Yeah, it's nice. It's got good sleep mats. So that won't be too bad. Still a bit of a uh, downhill to it. Just big enough for the average size two-person hiking tent. So it's a nice little location tucked back. And opposite that one, this one here. The shape of it, you'd really, you could squeeze two, I suppose. But you could really only fit the one on that one. A little bit pothole-y, if you want to say. Nothing serious. But decent enough. I feel there's a decent sleep mat. That'd be no trouble. And even on these ones, always use a footprint to your tent to protect it. And another one here. I've had the ants start to make a nest on this one. Again over here. That one's, yep, that's active. Got ants in that one. If it weren't for the ants, this would be a nice little one. Fairly level. I see a couple of potholes, but nothing too serious. Let's carry on to the next one. Now this is a nice size one, big enough for a single tent, or a, a, a one tent, which is the average size two person hiking tent, so would fit there nice. Ground level, the track's just there, but again it's nice, it's away from the shelter. And I think this is the furthest one, which isn't too bad. Fairly level, with a little bit of a lean to it, but you could, yeah, you could, you could add a little bit of a squeeze. You could fit two, two-person hiking tents on there, but fa fairly nice. Nice view over there. Now let's take this little track onto the back onto the track. Now this is the big one track. And that's the way you, you follow it to get up to Mount Cook. Now let's head back towards the shelter. Now if I'm right, this isn't the original sh uh, shelter built. There's one just on the left here, which got burnt in the bushfires. So let's go and have a look and read the plaque. It's got the old water tank oh. I just found a spider web. So anybody walking through there you're welcome it's gone yeah look, this would have been a lovely bit uh, place for the old shelter look at that view down into there okay and the view, look out straight up Mount Cook. Let's have a quick read, what's it say? Uh, as you walk through the Madnadnox, uh, you may notice the vegetation recovering from the Mount Cook wildfire, which burnt through more than 18,000 hectares in January 2003. The Mount Cook campsite was completely destroyed by the fire. The water tank nearby is the only surviving remnant. Which is that? Uh, where are we? The campsite was rebuilt. The toilet that uh, was some distance away miraculously survived the inferno and has now been relocated. The fire was a result of a lightning strike driven by northwest winds and a heavy accumulation of dry forest debris, known as fuels. Accumulation of dry forest. I've read that bit. Uh, it burnt fiercely up the slopes along the spine of Mount Cook and southwards for another 25 kilometres. Flames were up to 30 metres high with a plume of smoke rising 10 kilometres into the sky. The wildfire was brought under control only when the fire ran into fires carrying low fuel. As a, re as a result of a series of prescribed burns carried out by calm in the previous five years. The fire was so ferocious that in places it killed most of the overstory forest. Large areas of forest will take many decades to recover to its pre-fire state. You can see the understory vegetation is recovering very rapidly. Well, 
thought so that was 19 years ago and if you look out here now it's as if nothing and I just keep getting better I suppose if you wanted to you could pitch a tent here because there are a lot of stones and pea gravel but you could pit a, pitch a few tents here if you wanted to Let's go back and grab my walking pole. Now the toilets at the shelters, they're not flushing toilets. They're not connected to mains water. They are composting toilets, also known as long drops. And this one is back past the shelter but not as far as the warly one from the shelter and with them being composting toilets just put toilet tissue down it wet wipes are no no because if you use wet wipes the chemicals and everything in the wet wipes and the material doesn't compose and it destroys the compost. No chemicals, because that will destroy the composting and you'll end up with maggots and flies and smells coming out of there. I went to one that somebody had done that a couple of days before and it was infested with maggots. Well, probably a little bit more than a couple of days, but it was infested with maggots. And ladies, if it's that time of the month, you're going to have to take that home with you because that destroys the compost into your lady bits here I mean by uh, your tampons and your towels so this is the toilet your dunny also known as and that's all it is it's a lid with a seat and a long drop toilet below now there is toilet roll in this shelter at the moment. Toilet roll is not necessarily uh, provided so remember carry your own. But imagine sitting in the morning if there's nobody else have the door open and that's your loo with a view. Hey, how beautiful. Now remember last time I was here overnighting I did that early in the morning so I set off and it was still dark with the door open and I had a few visitors of kangaroos. They hopped by and then came back and just sat there looking at me. Oh, you buggers. <laughs> okay, that was Mount Cook Shelter. It's a really nice location. A lot of people get dropped off on the highway, walk in here, spend the night, and take a walk up Mount Cook and back down. Other people actually park and walk from Sullivan's Rock up to the top of Mount Cook have a picnic, have a lovely time up there and then they walk all the way back over Sullivan's Rock and back to the car I think staying the night at the shelter sounds better to me so I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have and you're not already a subscriber oh, talking to kangaroos, there's one hopping off up there <laughs> if you're not already a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button Click on the notification bell and select all so you can be notified of all future videos. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.